there, Master Hallish here, and welcome to things that the Yogscast did wrong or could improve when playing Open TTD. Now, I really like the Yogscast. I've been a fan of their content since the Jaffa days and before, and I also really like Open TTD. I've been playing it for years. So when the Yogs cast play Open TTD in their festive jingle jam, it's something that I really enjoy to watch. But having played the game for many years gives me some experience and I've noticed some things that they do wrong or ways that they could play a little bit better. So for both the purposes of entertainment and learning to play Open TTD from each other, here are 10 things that I've noticed last time they played Open TTD in their live stream. So here we are in Open TTD. I'm not just going to rip off their video and make a clip collection. I'll show you a still from each point that I'm talking about, and there'll be a link in the video description with a timestamp on, so you can go and look at their video at that part if you want to. And I'm going to show you in the game exactly what I'm talking about. First up is poor station placement, and you can see in this still that Duncan and Potato are both putting train stations around a city. Here we've got a comparable city, and this is roughly where one of the stations were placed. If you go to the station constructions, there's this uh, whole option here called higher coverage area highlight, and you can see the highlight of the where the station's going to be placed is in white, and the coverage, the area of which the station covers in terms of capturing um, passengers and mail and so forth, is in this bluish purplish colour. So if you look at where the coverage would be for this station, you can see we're not actually capturing that many of the houses and buildings within the city. You want to get as many as possible. Now there is a little option here in this city for us to nuzzle that station nice and close to the centre of the town. You can see we get a lot more buildings in this area. We get uh, the ability to get a lot more of the large centre buildings. You want to be looking for being able to put things around the edge of town kind of like this or maybe if we turn on transparency that you could put a station in around the back here, you can see we cover quite a few buildings there. Getting your station in nice and close and nuzzle it in those corners gets you those extra passengers. Now, later on, they did actually then do bus routes, transferring passengers from the middle of the town to the station. And you could do that as well, but having a good station coverage from the beginning will give you a nice little boost and help you fill up those trains with passengers much quicker. Now, if you didn't know, Open TTD is a free game on Steam, so if you want to know how to play, there's a tutorial on my channel and a link in the video description. Next up, we have not using the auto tool. For this one, Lewis was picking bits of track one by one from the various different sections. I'll show you what I mean. So here in the railway construction, we've got bits of track that go in various different directions. So if we want to come out this way, we've got to go out that way. And then if we want to change direction, we've got to swap the track to this one and go out that way. And this, whilst you know you can build track like this, is just so slow picking the track, going up and down between these different options. These first four options are pretty much pointless. You want the fifth option. This allows you to build track in various different directions depending on where you place the mouse cursor within the segment. It is really good, quick and easy and stops you going up and down all the time. Maybe it takes a little bit of practice to know exactly what bit goes where and how to place it, but that little bit of time investment is definitely worth it. Now, if you'd like to see me play Open TCD, I have started a brand new Let's Play recently, so you can check that out in the video description if you want to. Here we have Duncan laying some track, but it's not Duncan that does something wrong, it's Spiff. Spiff says that delivering mail to a town will make it grow faster than just passengers and this is just wrong now here in front of me i have a special city builder script set up and in this script mail does help grow the town but that's a special city builder script not the vanilla game and the yogs cast did have a script in their game but it wasn't a city builder one so we can ignore that and look at the normal town growth like what we've got here and for a normal town or city in Open TTD, it will grow if you deliver any cargo to up to five stations uh, within a period of 50 days. So you need to either drop off or pick up any cargo within 50 days to five different stations. More than five stations doesn't make an effect. One station good, two station better, five station the best. So the fact that you deliver mail is completely pointless. You can just deliver passengers and it will grow as fast as it will grow. In their live stream, some of the team 
have a race and in this race they get some pretty bad corners on their railway track and this slows the train down let's have a quick look at how to avoid that so here we have a train going down a track and it's coming up to a corner this corner is a 45 degrees turn to the right this will be okay and i'll explain why in a second here we have another one and it's going coming up to a corner here and we call this uh, a corner that's two 45 degrees corners even though it's happening within the same square it's going 45 degrees to the right and then it's going 45 degrees to the right again and this is important because the train length matters so the way that it works is that if a train turns in the same direction twice within its train length then the train will probably slow down there's some complicated maths in there to work out whether it will or won't and lots of factors but it's best just to completely avoid it because it probably will happen now i said in the same direction that's important so if you're looking if a train is going along the line here it will turn to the left and then it will turn to the right this will never slow a train down you have to turn twice in the same direction so twice right or twice left and here it's going left then right so a kink in the track like this will never slow a train down even if the kink is long or if the kink is tiny short so what we're looking at here is whether a train in its train length is turning in the same direction so in the bottom two examples the train is turning the same direction twice in its train length and it will probably slow down and at the top two examples the train is not turning twice within its train length and will not slow down so you've got to keep those diagonal corners longer than your train length Whilst you're pondering those train lengths, you might want to go to masterhellish.net to find out more about me, my different social medias and stuff. You might not, but if you do, masterhellish.net, you can find out more. Next up, we have some troublesome tracks. Here, Lewis is trying to get two stations hooked up to his line, and they're going all over the place in all sorts of different directions. And actually, later, he ends up putting a bridge roughly over here to be able to get over that piece of track and connect his output from his stations up to the line with lots of corners and kinks and bits when really you just need to think about the flow and the planning a little bit more in these sorts of situations and yes that comes with time and practice but the easy solution here would be just to remove this line and move it to this one so that you had this line being the one that is connected up incoming like that and then your outgoing line could be nicely connected like this no bridges no crossovers nice and neat loopy loopy next up i caught spiff placing signals manually one by one down the line now whilst this is okay you can get your signal tool and go down the line and place your signals it is a bit manual and cumbersome when there's a big fat automatic way of doing it why wouldn't you so here what we can do is on our other line is we can put a signal in manually and then click and drag down the line this will place signals at regular intervals along the track according to the number that you've got on the screen if you want larger intervals you can up this number and have signals at a larger distance along the track now there's an even better one because if you put a signal on the track like the one next to this sawmill here and then click and drag just like before but hold control it will place signals all the way down your line until the next junction or station or depot Next up is station design, and I saw some interesting stations that could be improved throughout different members of the team, but it is actually this station from Spiff that I decided to highlight as it's got something interesting to look at. Now I could talk about station designs for hours, I won't do that, we'll just have a look at this particular example. Here we've got uh, two trains in the station already, and we've got a third train waiting behind. Now it's currently waiting, blocking the junction just behind it. And that is because of the two signals that we've got in front of the platform. These signals shouldn't be here. They're going to hinder the pathing. For example, if this train over here decides to finish loading and it's going to head out of the platform and off down the line, our train number three back here is blocking that main line, stopping any other trains that may want to come down that line from using that available platform. Instead of these two signals, we should just have a signal here before the split. 
And all this extra track before the platform is completely unnecessary as well, making the whole footprint of the station just bigger than it needs to be, taking up more room for your precious network. Something a little bit more like this would be more appropriate. No extra lengths of track and one signal just before the split. This would be a little bit more efficient. Next up, it's shared orders, or really a lack thereof. Throughout the live stream, I saw various members of the team just not using shared orders. And you really, really should. For example, here we've got a train. It's going between two different stations and it's got some orders. If we get a new vehicle, we can manually make the vehicle, or we could just clone the existing vehicle to get exactly the same one. And you can see it's got the same orders as train one here. But these orders aren't shared. If I make a change to one, it's not going to happen to the other. And for the most part, maybe you don't want that. But in a situation where you've got two or maybe three or four or many trains all doing the same little journey around the same little loop or up and down the same line, shared orders is a must. For example, if you wanted to change and add an extra platform or an extra station or an extra visit, let's just say that we wanted to go to a waypoint along the way on the track. We could look at the orders of the first train and say, OK, after this station down here at Songfing Way West or whatever that's um, play, uh, north, sorry, we can go to after that we can go to the waypoint and you can see on the orders I've added on the, the waypoint. But if we have a look at the st train that's in the depot here, that's not changed on its orders. Now, what we can do is get rid of these orders and just click go to, and then click on this train holding control. That will create shared orders. And you can see here that both of these orders say shared orders at the bottom. You can also do the same when cloning a train. Hold control and click on it, and the new train will also have shared orders. That means if we want to change something, that we only have to change it on one of the trains in that shared orders group. For example, maybe we decided this waypoint was a bad idea after all. So we delete it and you can see it's disappeared from the orders of all the trains. It makes managing your vehicles so much better and you don't know half around changing all the orders of lots and lots of trains. It makes it much better. Learn to use shared orders, it's fantastic. Next up, we've got Deltos not creating a hub at an industry. So here we've got two industries, similar to what they had in the live stream. I believe they were doing coal and this is wood from a forest, but it's the same principle. Now, what they had was a railway station right in between the two, which kind of makes sense. I mean, you want to bring things from one industry halfway and you want to bring the other thing from the other industry halfway and maybe with road vehicles or trains or whatever. But with this particular way of doing it, you have to have two separate road systems bringing things to the hub, which is completely unnecessary. If you just get one of your uh, railway stations at one of the industries, then you only need one road to bring stuff from the second industry, completely eliminating one of the routes that you need to put down. And now we have Duncan's map scrolling. This one was a little bit painful to watch, slowly scrolling all the way across the screen and eventually getting to where he wants to be on the other side of the map. Whereas in Open TTD, it is much easier than that. I mean, you can zoom out for a start and then just drag with the mouse to get very quickly from one side of the world to the other. And if you are using the arrow keys to scroll, you can hold shift to scroll even quicker. And also, you could open the world map and you can click to the various different places on the map that you want to go to. The very top of the map or maybe the very bottom of the map. And also, 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 you can click on the list of stations and just zoom over to where you want to be. Also, 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 you can click on the name of the town you want to go to and zoom straight over to there. There's many, many different ways to not have to manually, slowly scroll across the map. 
So there we go, ways that you can improve your open TTD play demonstrated by the Yogscast. Their stream is fantastic, good fun, and of course also for charity as well. If you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. But that is going to be all from me. Remember, it links to the tutorials and my Let's Plays are all in the video description, and I will see you soon. If you've got any thoughts, ideas, or questions, pop them down in the comments section. But for me, for now, take care. Thanks for watching and goodbye.